Well, Apple's taking a conservative stance on its outlook for iPhone production in 2022. The tech giant reportedly asking suppliers to assemble approximately 220 million iPhones. That's about the same number as last year. This comes as a smartphone industry faces several headwinds weighing down the market. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley to bring uh, to break it all down for us. Dan, it isn't part of the issue though here that there's a expected upgrade in the fall, so that may sort of hold consumers back a bit from you know using or going out and buying this current. Yeah, so model. it's interesting. We have the the new iPhones come out uh, around September, the end of September, sometimes October, depending on you know what's going on uh, with production and supply chain, uh, and so you know we have this kind of early part of the year where we see tons of people buy them, usually for the holiday season. Uh, And then throughout the rest of the year, you know, or the the rest of it comes in the following year. So this 220 million units that we're talking about, the same as we saw in 2021, it takes into account only a little bit of the actual upcoming iPhone, the iPhone, let's just call it 14, because we're on the 13 right now. So it's not necessarily saying that the iPhone 14 is going to, you know, lag behind the 13. It's just initially they're thinking that. They could also be cutting down some of the shipments uh, or production of the 13 uh, and then ramping up the 14. So we just don't know what that uh, breakdown is between the two units at this point. And I think that's that's an important piece to point out. Uh, Also, one of the issues that Apple is facing right now is that four to eight billion dollar hit they're expected to take this quarter in revenue as a result of the lockdowns in China uh, and the inability for them to actually get phones built as well as sold in the Chinese market. Obviously, China, a massively important place for them. Uh, And so the fact that people can't get outside to go and purchase their phones, they can't even get them delivered in some cases, uh, let alone get to work. Now, obviously, that means that Apple's going to take a hit there as well. So I think that the $220 million, uh, sorry, unit number uh, is important to look at. But I think the breakdown would be even more important if we were able to get a a sense of that going forward. And again, you know, it seems like things are alleviating a little bit on that China front. But Mm -hmm. I want to shift gears to another side of Apple's story, and that is the HR bit of it. We've been Mm -hmm. paying attention to the return to office, but also some news coming out on the wage front with regards to how some of the retail workers are being paid. What's the update on that? Yeah, so Apple obviously is, you know, very uh, secretive. Generally, we don't hear many complaints from workers, but that has started to change over the past year or so. And we've seen more workers come out saying they don't want to return to office. These are the uh, Apple office workers. Uh, Apple was trying to get them to come back at least three days a week. They said, look, we've been doing this for two years. Why do we have to do that? Uh, Apple wanting them back. And then we also have the retail workers. Now, there's been talk of unionizing in some of those places, uh, and there are some workers and uh, at, uh, locations who have begun that process. So Apple is basically trying to cut that off and say, look, we're going to increase your your pay. Uh, obviously, inflation is an issue here. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go and unionize. We're going to give you your fair share. We, of course, have had huge quarters recently. It's, I mean, every quarter. It's another record-breaking quarter for Apple. So <laughs> that's where they're going now. You know, we, we've heard tech companies push this line before, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Amazon does this all the time to say, look, we actually pay above the market in it's terms of wages money, for mm-hmm. warehouses. But so money, $20 yeah. to $22 bump, is that enough to, to quiet the union discussion? I don't think so. And I think it's because we keep hearing about all the record quarters that Apple has. And these people are, you know, rightfully thinking, look, we're the ones that are getting your product into people's hands. Not only that, but it takes us a lot. Look, you know, People that go into Apple stores, tech stores, or, you know, in general. I used to work at a Best Buy. It is the worst because (laughs) nobody knows what they're talking about when they come in and ask you for something. And you have to basically walk them through it. So you can spend, you know, an hour at least sometimes just talking to someone about selling them on a phone, how it works. Not even necessarily getting paid on um, a commission at all. So that's a, a big thing to take into account here. And I think these Apple workers, they want to be able to get their fair share of these huge profits that Apple is, you know, reaping uh, and then, you know, kind of add on to that, uh, whether that's, you know, better vacation, uh, better time off, better uh, chances to be promoted inside. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're seeing. And, you know, according to some reports, Apple is pushing back. Uh, there was uh, some talk of uh, at the World Trade Center store where they were looking at 
whether or not people are looking to start to unionize or want right. to unionize. So, you know, I, th I think there's going to be more going on here when it comes to the retail side right. that we're going to continue to hear about, maybe not necessarily the, the side of things at Apple's headquarters in Cooper. I did not know you were a former Best Buy employee. I was. You still have your blue polo shirt? I never heard Dan oh, complain I, I about did. his days at Best Buy. This <laughs> is something to... we hear in the newsroom oh, all yikes. the time. Oh, yikes. All right, we'll save the stories for later on. <laughs> yeah, finance is Dan Howley. Thanks.